Turkey is about 90% Muslim country. It's like the moment that you're born, that's like, okay, you're Muslim. You're, you're just stamped with this label. Because you just happened to be born in Turkey. When we lived there, we had some, some type of uh, understanding of God. It's a general fear. Uh, it is more like a fear than a reverence, if you will. So it was a real fear, fear. Gospel uh, meant to me uh, the music, a genre of music, a gospel music. That was the extent of my knowledge about gospel. We were involved in textiles and exports uh, uh, to U.S. and the company that we were dealing and doing business with, uh, they, they went underwent a big structural uh, change and at that point we decided to part our ways with them. But meantime, we always wanted to move to the United States. Since we were going to start from scratch again, we said, why not in the U.S., why not now? So we came back to Turkey, we packed up, we told our parents that we're moving. We have never, ever, ever been in Florida until we actually landed here. Somehow it just God led us to this way. We didn't know much uh, about Christianity. We would watch uh, people getting in and out of the churches during the Christmas time. And we always wondered, what if uh, we showed up there, would they even let us in? And frankly, uh, we thought maybe they would know we were, we were Muslims, they wouldn't let us in because we had to be Christians to get in there. Uh, but what is happening inside, we have to know. Uh, we never get a chance. This job became available, which was in medical care, um, health care, which I have no knowledge of. It is like total opposite textiles background to healthcare and somehow the director decided to hire me. She was the one that who was actually invited us. She said, why don't you come to our church, Calvary Boca. It's an afternoon service or yes, a uh, three o'clock service. service. Uh, this is December 24th, uh, 2009. After we were actually saved, that everybody was saying, well, she prayed for you constantly. We dressed up, uh, thinking appropriately, and uh, we went there. Service started, and I was looking for for the stage, and then there's this screen, and there's this person on that screen. He's saying something, I'm listening. I got overwhelmed. I started crying and shaking and weeping, um, and I'm looking for an exit sign so that I can stop this embarrassment and just get myself out of there but I couldn't see the exit sign and something just stood me up just grabbed me grabbed a hold of me and just stood me up and I started walking down that aisle without knowing where I was going turning back I mean it's just walking like probably 10 seconds after I walked in and uh, right there right then just held hands and uh, I didn't know if it was God I didn't know anything until that moment that I just opened my heart and said Lord Jesus then I knew. There we were, and we accepted Christ in our lives. We came home after the event. We were like emotionally very excited. And I was so wanting to learn, so wanting to read, because uh, 52 years almost uh, that I, I was lost. So I started reading. I probably spent a good 12, 13 hours a day reading the Bible, listening to sermons. This is the next probably two, three months. It was a fast-paced uh, growth, if, if you will. I lost interest all of a sudden towards, towards the alcoholic beverages. I had a radar detector in the car. The very next day, I got rid of that radar detector. Quitting smoking. He's been smoking since he's 16. It, th these things are, are, are so, so beyond me. God says something, he's so faithful, he does it for me. God gets you where he wants you, and then once you're there, the grace is so uh, overwhelming. You just can't find your exit.